when I got to the Army Corps of Engineers, I realized we've been doing a fantastic job pushing energy technologies forward, decarbonizing the grid, but there was a massive wall that we still had to overcome, and that wall was made of concrete. So uh, I was surprised to learn when I started my journey with the Corps that about seven to eight percent of global anthropogenic CO2 emissions are actually directly related to the manufacture of cement alone. And if you add in the contribution of some of the other construction materials we generally think about, things like asphalt, steel, up to 13% of our total emissions can be isolated to that industrial sector. The UN Brundtland Commission in 1987 defined sustainability as meeting the needs of our uh, present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. And so when we talk about sustainable construction materials then, what we're trying to do is build better, safer, stronger buildings now to meet our current needs while keeping in mind um, the reduction of CO2 emissions which may impact future generations uh, via climate change. A huge development in sustainable construction materials has been the rollout of these things called environmental product declarations. And these are really fun. They're kind of like environmental nutrition facts, like a list that you might see on the side of a cereal box. But instead of reporting things like protein and carbs, they're reporting kilograms of CO2 emissions, kilograms of chlorofluorocarbon emissions, and all these other factors that we're really interested in when we talk about making materials more sustainable. And so before, we were really shooting in the dark when it came to reducing emissions associated with materials, because there was no quantitative measure of what those emissions might be. But now, after the rollout of Executive Order 14057 and the implementation of a federal mandate for EPD reporting, we're going to have the tools we need to start comparing, contrasting different materials and implementing some of these sustainable solutions. I really enjoy and get really excited every day to work with our really diverse group of engineers and scientists at the Engineer Research and Development Center because as a very cross-disciplinary, multi-lab organization, we get to take problems that we see in the soldier and civilian sector and find solutions that meet multiple needs across the DoD. So for instance, our Coastal and Hydraulics Laboratory, CHL, is responsible for maintaining navigable waterways. And the way they do that is by dredging out harbors and ports. Millions of pounds of silt and other materials come out of our harbors and ports so ships can navigate them. Our environmental laboratory, which I'm a part of, um, EL, supports that mission by finding beneficial uses for that dredge material. We build islands out of it. We restore wetlands out of it. Um, we extract valuable raw materials like rare earth elements from it. And so when we talk about sustainable construction materials then, our Geotechnical and Structures Laboratory, GSL, noticed we had all this material and said, what if we could harvest some of that dredge material and add it to concrete as a supplementary cementitious material? So the nexus of all these different laboratories working on what one might consider to be unique individual problems and expanding their scope to look for multiple solutions is what really makes Ertic a unique place to work, a unique culture of innovation to make the world better and safer.